Hello everyone. Today we will go for our next poem, poem two point two, Indian Weavers. So welcome, dear students. Two point two, Indian Weavers, icebreakers. Artisans are also called craftsmen. They are creators of diverse goods and use their hands to create unique functional and also decorative items using traditional techniques now complete the web given below different types of artisans or craftsmen and we have to complete the web we have to mention we have to enlist all those craftsmen which are traditionally known first one is goldsmith it is given here goldsmith the next one is carpenter sculptor mason potter iron smith or blacksmith then there are various types of weavers weavers of wool jute khadi etc handloom weavers are also there and tailor is also there so all these are the traditional artisans or craftsmen they are known for their skilled manual work they work with with a high quality of dexterity so here we have enlisted all these craftsmen or artisans next question discuss with your partner discuss with your partner the seasons or occasions when we need following types of clothes woolen clothes when we need woolen clothes when there is a winter season or sometimes it may be a monsoon season at that time we need woolen clothes rich silk clothes rich silk clothes we need them at the time of functions at the time of festivals various types of ceremonies are there at that time uh, we use such type of clothes that is rich silk clothes while performing various kind of religious rituals also we use silk clothes casual clothes casual clothes we wear them every day we use casual clothes or we mm, feel comfortable when we use casual clothes for office use we also use casual clothes actually casual clothes are all those clothes uh, which were comes under the heading of western clothes the last colorful comfortable clothes so we wear comfortable and colorful clothes at the time uh, when we went for a outing or a picnic or at home also we wear colorful and comfortable clothes in monsoon season also pe people prefer wearing colorful and comfortable clothes we are moving towards the next exercise let's let's play a game the teacher will ask students some questions student will understand that there are some exceptions to the general rules let's start so here we are learning about the exception of a rule one who weaves is a weaver the answer is given the one who weaves is a weaver one who plays a game is not a gamer but he is a player you can understand the difference one who play a game is a player the one who sings is a singer one who dances is a dancer one who teaches is a teacher but one who cooks is a cook or chef you know that one who cooks is a cook or a chef so this is the difference we learn uh, from these examples given over here that though everywhere we took help the uh, took help of the verb but the still the uses are different next exercise we have often seen the picture of gandhi ji spinning on his charkha discuss the reasons behind this one has been given for you the reason which is given here is 
to give rural people an opportunity to earn their livelihood this is the most important reason why gandhi ji started spinning on the charkha because it gives an opportunity to earn the livelihood for the people who are living in the rural area and now what are the other reasons we can easily find them out that it uh, helps people uh, it helps people to use the skin friendly uh, skin friendly clothes which are there uh, we know that the clothes which are made uh, from spinning on the charkha they are skin friendly skin friendly they are good for health it also um, give prestige to the idea that uh, we have to use made in india products that is swadeshi products then uh, it also decreases the problem of unemployment which is there we know that there is a problem of employment huge problem of employment so it helps in decreasing the problem of unemployment so uh, it also helps in building self esteem in indian people and uh, we know that uh, due to this act of gandhi ji it is a act which gives dignity to all those businesses which are uh, there in india that is swadeshi products and uh, there is a famous theory of gandhi ji uh, 3h theory where we found that hand hair and heart these three uh, things are uh, considered important hand hair and heart so it is in very necessary uh, according to this theory a person should have some kind of a work in his hand so it will definitely uh, going to effect his head and heart so this is what we can say according to the theory of gandhi ji's 3h theory that is hand head heart and hand head heart and hand these three things are important according to this theory next name some tools used by the weavers so every time we found that the person who is artisan or a craftsman he is using some kind of a tools while he is doing his work so if we consider weavers they need a loom then what they need they need a comb they need tapestry needles they need scissors and most importantly they need warp and weft so a picture is uh, i have given a picture over here warp and weft warp means uh, some kind of a thread once again and weft is also some kind of a thread so you can easily observe the arrangement of threads horizontal and vertical arrangement of threads weaving of those threads it is given here and what is important for a weaver is this warp and weft so with the help of these they weave a beautiful cloth which is very useful for us name some type of yarns used by the weavers some types of yarns some type of threads usually used by the weavers or the fiber we can say the fiber so linen is given here then silk is the material which is used by the weavers then cotton is the material which is used by the weavers flax is the material which is used by the weavers jute or wool is also the material used by the weavers to weave the clothes here we have an introduction to the poetess that is sarojini naidu from 1879 to 1949 was the life span of her she was a political activist she is actively busy or what we can say she is one of the active members of various movements going on at the time of gandhi ji so she is a political activist feminist she is also known as a feminist 
and the first Indian woman who became the president of the Indian National Congress. She was an important figure in India's struggle for independence. We know that she was one of the active members of Indian uh, independence movement and that is why she was actively engaged in various movements with Gandhiji. So she is also known as a Gandhian. So she is the important figure in India's struggle for independence. Sarojini Naidu's work as a poet earned her the sobriquet of Nightingale of India. Due to her poems, she was known as she is familiar to the people of India as a Nightingale of India. Later, she became the governor of United Provinces in 1947, becoming the first woman to hold the office of the governor in independent India. So, she is a very important figure in uh, Indian politics also. Indian Weaver is a short poem where the poet talks about three types of garment. Garment, that is clothes, that the weavers view at three particular times of a day. Each stanza of the poem represents the three important events of human life. Birth, that is childhood, adulthood, that is young age, and death, that is old age. The colors mentioned in the stanzas are very significant as they indicate the moods related to the events also. So, some kind of events are also described in the poem. So, we will see the actual poem. Indian weavers. We know that Indian weavers, they were working tirelessly and that is why um, Sarojini Naidu thought to write on them and that is why the title Indian weavers is there. Weavers, weaving at break of day, at the time of dawn, early in the morning, weavers weaving at break of day, why do you weave a garment so gay? Garment that is cloth which is full of hope, which is full of happiness. Why do you weave a garment so gay? Blue as the wing of a halcyon wild. We weave the robes of a newborn child. Blue as the wing of halcyon wild. Halcyon wild. It's the name of a bird. It is given here. Kingfisher, a bird which has bright, colorful plums or feathers we can say the one who has bright and colorful feathers marathi madhe tela khandya pakshi asa mhatla jai so blue as the wing of halcyon wild we view the robes of a newborn child so early in the morning at dawn at the break of a day these weavers are weaving robes that is clothes for a newborn child so here the poets speak about the first and important stage in human life that is childhood. Weavers waving at fall of a night. Working for the whole day. They are also working at a fall of a night. Why do you weave a garment so bright? The poets inquire why the weavers are busy in weaving garment so colorful so luminous so dazzling showing some kind of a happiness so why they are engaged in weaving a garment so bright like the plums of a peacock just like the feathers soft feathers of a peacock purple and creed we view the marriage bells of a queen and the answer is they are weaving marriage bells. A type of addition which is there to a, what we can say bride's clothes that is a marriage bells. A picture is a, here. It is a, an example of marriage bells. It is an addition to the 
wedding cloth of a bride so marriage bells of a queen so at the fall of a night after the day ends or at the time of evening so here the poet is speak about the second important stage that is the end of adulthood or the beginning of youth we can see weavers weaving solemn and still the weavers are weaving solemn that is sincerely they are weaving in deep silence they are in a in a condition of motionless they are weaving in, in a calm manner so weavers weaving solemn and still why do you weave in the moonlight chill the poetess inquired that why do you weave in the moonlight chill in a so cold atmosphere white as a feather and white as a cloud white as a feather so no color is there on the feather so white as a feather and white as a cloud the cloud is also white so the cloud is also what we can say a fertile cloud white as a cloud we weave red man's funeral shroud and those people at the time of a night at at night they are weaving a dead man's funeral shroud the cloth which is used for a dead person shroud means a cloth in which a dead person is wrapped so we found that at the time of night when there is darkness there is cold atmosphere and uh, moonlight is there at that time clothes which are woven by the weavers are is we can say that it's a dead man's funeral shroud so three important stages of human life that is childhood adulthood and death uh, what we can say old age these three important stages of human life are described with the help of three stanzas over here poetic devices used in the poem the first one is simile a figure of speech in which one thing is compared to another thing using like or as in simile we found that two things are compared with the help of like or as we can easily find it out that in the first stanza blue as the wing of a halcyon wild a comparison is there how are the garments for a newborn child they are blue in color as the wing of halcyon wild the next example of simile in the poem second stanza like the plumes of a peacock purple and green we view the marriage bells of a queen marriage bells of a queen they are compared with the the clothes the those are woven for the Mm, marriage bells of a queen they are compared with the plumes of a peacock feathers soft feathers of a peacock which are purple and green in color and in the third stanza white as a feather and white as a cloud how is the dead man's funeral shroud it is compared with a white feather and white cloud so in this way simile is used in the poem in every stanza we have an example of a simile over here imagery imagery means the work of one who makes images or invisible representation of objects to represent something by an image or symbol to represent something symbolically see in this poem things are represented symbolically at a break of a day at a at a break of a day birth is symbolized at a fall of a night adulthood or the beginning of youth is symbolized and in the moonlight chill the death is symbolized by the poet so break of a day Child, what is their birth, fall of a night, adulthood, and 
in the moonlight chain death is symbolized by the poets with the help of imaginary uh, imagery that is a symbolical representation of something metaphor the use of a word or phrase to refer to something that it is not invoking a direct similarity between the word or phrase used and the thing described without using words like and as so here once again we found that in metaphor a comparison is there but there is no use of word just like like and as so here we have an example of metaphor the robes of a newborn child the robes of a newborn child that is childhood then the marriage bells that is young age the marriage bells of a queen is young age and the last one is dead man's funeral shroud it symbolizes old age so three important stages or stages of human life that is childhood young age and old age these three important stages of human life are symbolically what we can say metaphorically used metaphorically used in this poem they uh, they are used in the poem metaphorically so they uh, they are indirectly compared with robes of a newborn child with the marriage bells and with the dead man's funeral shroud actually they speak about the three important stages of human life namely childhood youth or adulthood and old age so these are the three important stages and they are compared with robes of a newborn child the marriage bells and a dead man's funeral shroud so you will find out the uh, use uh, that is metaphorical use of this poem next poetic device we are going to discuss is alliteration alliteration means the repetition of consonants at the beginning of two or more words immediately succeeding each other or at short short intervals so we found that if there is a repetition of consonant sound we found that uh, in this poem we were weaving the sound is repeated garment ki g sound is repeated then wing and wild blue as a wing of a halcyon wild v sound once again repeated so whenever the same sound is repeated we found alliteration is there then the next example of alliteration plums peak of purple p sound is repeated plums peak of purple is the repetition of same sound that is p sound then solemn and still s sound is repeated in the example then the next example we have over here is mm, what we we what you we what sound is repeated so many times we have found that we we what we what you we we were saving so at that um, time we found that the same sound is repeated and that is why it is alliteration next is rhyming words a word that rhymes with another word in that it is pronounced identically with the other word from the vowel in its stressed syllable to the end so we can easily find out the rhyming words which are there in the poem which are uh, easily find out with the help of stressed syllable to the end in this poem we found that day and gay forms a rhyming pair wild and child night and bright green and queen still and chill cloud and shroud all these are the examples of rhyming words then next rhyming scheme 
Rhyming scheme is the pattern of rhymes at the end of a poem or song. It is usually shown with the help of small letters that is A A example A A A B A B or A B C A B C etc. So we will try to find out a pattern of rhyming words. We found that in the very first stanza day and gay. So these are the rhyming words which uh, are there and they are uh, used one after another. So day and gay. So there we will use pattern that is a a then while with child then we will use the next letter that is b b so what will be the rhyming scheme of the first stanza a a b b so a a b b is the rhyming scheme for the first stanza likewise knight and bride green and queen once again we have the same type of a pattern that is a a b b Steel and chill, cloud and shroud, once again same kind of a rhyming scheme that is A, A, B, B, same kind of a pattern is there. What uh, do you understand from this that we think about a pattern for every stanza separately. So for every stanza we have to consider the rhyming scheme separately. Next. Uh, we have already discussed all the figures of speeches and the, all those lines which are there. So, with the help of a discussion, you can complete the table, simile, imagery, metaphor and alliteration. The rhyming scheme in the first stanza is ABAB and rhyming schemes in the second and third stanzas are ABAB once again. So, we have already solved these exercises. Now this is the time for homework. The poet has asked a question at the beginning of every stanza. Explain the effect it creates on the reader. So we know that every stanza the poet is she is asking a question and what type of an effect is there. Generally these type of questions are known as rhetorical questions. Rhetorical questions are the questions which need no answer. They are used only for the sake of asking. They are used in order to stress something. They uh, give the poem a kind of a uh, structure that is a communicative structure or communicative poem is there. There is a conversation dialogue between the reader and the poetess. So that is why. A question is asked and it is a kind of a rhetorical question. So what kind of effect it creates is just like someone is asking question and someone is giving answer. Or, or we can say a poet is she is asking question and the viewers they are ask they are giving answers to the questions. So this kind of a effect is there. Then you have to write an appreciation of the poem. You know what are the points important while writing an appreciation of the poem. You can take help of the question which is there under one two point one. That is, uh, in the first poem also we have talked about all those points which are important in appreciation of the poem. Then you have to compose four lines on importance of clothes. So with the help. Uh, in this poem, we uh, also discussed the importance of clubs in our life. So you can easily write on the importance of clothes in our life. So this is what we can say. Writing a paragraph on the given idea. Write an appeal to use handloom products in our daily life. We have already discussed the Im benefits or the importance of using Swadeshi products and made in India products. So here you have to write an, an appeal to use handloom products. What are the uh, benefits if people started using handloom products or made in India products? Handloom products which will uh, definitely um, promoting which is useful for in promoting Indian weavers. So you have to complete this homework in your notebook and maintain it. 
सो थैंक यू स्टूडेंट दिस इज द डिस्कशन ऑन पोएम टू पॉइंट टू इंडियन वीवर्स गो थ्रू इट एंड आस्क मी इफ यू हैव एनी डाउट थैंक यू